Hey Posh fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Wind Locker. In today's video we are doing a little haul and showcase of polish from Ella and Mila. It has been a brand that I've been eyeing for quite some time and they had a sale back in January of this year and I decided to go ahead and purchase some. I think the sale was like 30% off. So I did go ahead and grab nine of their polishes as well as two of their nail basics. I got their top coat as well as their nail... Uh, nutrition formula that's supposed to help uh, correct stains on the nails healthily so I thought I would give that a try and I did get two of their hollows which I was really curious to try because the photos on the website were really really beautiful so let's go ahead and dig in this first one of course is their top coat this is called in a rush so I think based on the name, this is a quick dry top coat. I have yet to try it, so I thought I would give this a try on the swatches that I've done. So let's go ahead and see how it looks on the swatches. So these are all the colors that I got from them. I did seem to have a color palette going when I was shopping there. So this is over the first one, which is sort of a dusty purple. It is sort of a thicker formula for this top coat, and I don't think I quite got enough on my brush. So it might take a little bit of practice to sort of learn how this flows on the nail. But it looks like it'll turn out nice and glossy. So that was Ella and Mila's In A Rush top coat. The next item we're not really going to be able to test out, but I will show you what it is. This is their spotless base coat. This is supposed to help remedy the stains that you have on your nails, and I've definitely been having that as a problem. So I'm hoping to give this a try here soon and see if this can help with that issue. So that was again their spotless base coat. Now moving on to the polishes. This first one is a cream formula. This one is in their Dream collection and this one is called Night In. This one falls pretty nicely into that category of purpley polishes that I really enjoy in that dusty formula where they sort of lean gray toned in uh, their purpleness. So they sort of cross over between a purple, sometimes even a taupe and a gray. This one is kind of similar to one that I have from Zoya, which is called Avi. It's a color that I'm drawn to, so it doesn't surprise me. Although on camera, I'm definitely seeing some differences. The one from Ella and Mila is definitely a little bit darker and maybe a touch of a browner tone by comparison. But this one was really nice. The formula on this was nice and opaque. This is it in two coats. And you are seeing that with the glossy top coat that we just applied. I don't think anyone would need more than the two coats. I will be curious to come back and uh, do some comparisons eventually of this with the other colors in this color family because like I've said, I buy this kind of color a lot. Um, I'm always afraid that if I don't get the one that I'm eyeing, it's going to be that one that just gives me that aha moment and that's my perfect shade. So um, this one though was beautiful and again that, that one was called Night In. The next one is in that same color family except much lighter by comparison. This one almost uh, would be comparable to Chinchilli from Essie, although as you can see here, Chinchilli is actually even more gray than this one from Ella and Mila. And this one is called Mauve Over. It is another really beautiful shade, obviously much lighter than Night In. I love this tone. Obviously, I'm going to be repeating myself on that note because these two, like I said, I've sort of lumped into the same family. But this one is really gorgeous. This is it in two coats. I absolutely love this shade. It's a really nice tone. The way I would describe this is sort of like chewed up grape bubble gum, <laughs> which probably sounds pretty gross, but that's sort of the, in my mind's eye how I see this color. And um, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just strange, but... <laughs> Um, I really like how this one looks. It is absolutely gorgeous. Again, I will be curious to see how it does compare to some of the other colors that I have in this color family from other brands because same with this uh, deeper tone of it, I buy this kind of color quite a lot. But it is a gorgeous color and again the formula was pretty nice. It was opaque for me in two coats and I don't see anyone needing a third. So that was Mauve Over. The third one is a little bit more on the lilac color side. This one is called 
Please Me. And this is a really beautiful shade. I actually think that this would work rather nicely for the very peri color of the year. It is not as dark as a lot of the colors that I chose for my very peri nail polish video, but this one is really, really gorgeous. This is it in two coats. It is that really interesting shade of lilac with a pinch of blue when you compare it to a purple. So that's just comparing it to a Zoya. That one is Savita. So as you can see, it's just got that pinch of blue even more so on camera than I'm seeing in person. So we will be curious to see if this is one of those colors that sort of shifts depending on the lighting source that you're having um, because I love colors like that. So, so far I'm thinking that one is going to be a favorite from this haul and I cannot wait to try it. I'll probably have this on my spring rack. And again, that one was Please Me. I think I'm going to switch up the label though. It drives me nuts when they're upside down like that. All right, got that all fixed. Next up is one of their hollows. This one I was very curious to see because hollows are one of those things where oftentimes when it's a non-indie brand making them, they just don't quite live up to expectations. But check this out. It's gorgeous. I really, really am happy that I got this. I'm in fact kicking myself for not getting the third color that I was considering in their holographic formula. This one is from their Enchanted collection and it is called Zephyr. I believe the other one was a darker purple, more like a grapey purple. This one is more comparable to Mauve Over in its tone. It is sort of that gray neutral purple tone and I really, really like how it turned out. I did end up doing three coats, although I think some people might only need two on the nail swatch wheel here it was just the slightest bit still translucent when I held it up to the light so I wanted to give it a bit more opacity but look at that holographic rainbow this is really really gorgeous the linear flare on this is very pronounced I love the color I think I'm really going to be enjoying this one for winter just love it. And of course, because I love purples, I knew I would love this one. <laughs> I was just not too sure initially about how the hollow would turn out, but I'm very, very impressed. Again, I will be curious to see how this compares to some of my other holographic formulas, but just from the swatch, I'm very impressed so far. So that, just look at that. That again was Zephyr. Now moving on into our browns, this one is called Cup of Latte, and I was really curious to see this one because this is sort of in that camel tone that I was really looking for for fall last year, and I never really found one that fit the bill. Um, I think I did end up finding something kind of close in Essie uh, this past winter. But for fall, I hadn't really found one. So I was happy to see that Ella and Mila had a color that I think would work. And I really like it in person. This is it in two coats. It's a really beautiful neutral sort of brown. Not quite as camel -y on the nail as I was hoping it would be. I think in, in my mind's eye, the camel color that I was thinking of has a little bit more yellow in it. But it is a really beautiful tone of brown. It's nice and soft without being too pastel. It is a lovely neutral shade and I think this would look amazing on a lot of different skin tones. So that is a color that I think I'm going to be pulling out this next early fall, and that was a cup of latte. The next color is sort of in the pinkier tone than the last one. Cup of latte had a little bit more brown in it. This has a little bit more pink in it, and this one is called Dreamcatcher. This one is also from the Dream Collection, as was Night In. And this is another gorgeous color. It is again in the cream formula. That is one thing I will say about the Ella and Mella line so far. I don't see a whole lot of specialty formulas. They were mostly creams with their uh, holographic collection. And I think they did have a couple of shimmers and a, a few glitters, but none of those really spoke to me. So I'll be curious to see if they do end up expanding their line to a few other uh, more intriguing finishes. But so far, I'm really happy with their creams, and so I can see why they would have a lot of them in their lineup. So this is Dreamcatcher in two coats. It is that beautiful, mauve dusty tone. Again, this is another shade that I kind of am drawn to quite a lot. So I will have a couple of these to do some comparisons to here eventually. Um, this tone of mauve pink 
I just, I, I really, really like. So I will be curious to see how it does compare. Offhand, what I'm curious to see if it will compare to, and I don't have it out, is actually Essie's Ladylike. And I know China Glaze has a couple of colors in this similar tone. I think I did have one out and it's actually grayer by comparison. This one is head to taupe. I did have this one on my winter rack, although I didn't ever do a video on adding that one to my winter rack. Um, but as you can see by comparison, it is a slightly lighter tone and a bit more gray. The other color that I did have on my winter rack from Zoya woo, is very different. Very different indeed. It's actually much, much more gray by comparison. This one is called Easton and I don't even think they compare. So we're not going <laughs> to we're not going to stick around with that, but I know I have a lot more in my collection. So once I end up doing comparisons, I'm sure I'll have quite a lot to compare it to. But like I said, it is a really beautiful shade. And the formula on this one, like all the others, was really nice in two coats. I don't see anyone really needing a third coat unless you have very, very long nails. So that again was dream catcher. Next up, we're moving into more of our reddish pink tones. This one is called Wanderer. And this one online, I was really curious to see how it would look in person because it's that really beautiful, almost terracotta leaning, orangey, but pinky, really hard to describe colors. I think you could almost call this a Marsala. So I was really curious to see how it would look in person. This is it in two coats and I am not disappointed. I love this color. This I think is another standout and I will be wanting to wear this in the fall. If not, it's kind of an unusual spring shade, maybe. I don't know. I really, really like it though. It's got that sort of a rosewood uh, but with a little bit more orange or red in it. It's such a beautiful color. I really love shades like this that are really hard to describe. So I'm really glad that I did end up getting this. And that again was Wanderer. Next up is from their love collection. This one is called Till Forever. And just to compare it to Wanderer, this one is definitely a lot more on the pink side, whereas Wanderer had a lot more of that brown tone in it. This one is another beautiful, beautiful shade. Um, again, sort of in that family of colors of a mauve pink that I end up adding to my collection quite a lot because I am drawn to it. This is it in two coats. And I do think this is darker than most of the colors in this family that I end up having in my collection. I think most of the mauves end up being more in this lighter tone. So I'm really happy to add this one to my collection. It is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really like this one. Again, formula wise, this was in two coats. I don't really th think that many people would need a third coat. It was nice and opaque, just a beautiful, lovely shade. I think this one falls for my taste more into the fall category, but you could wear it for winter. I mean, honestly, you can wear any color that you want any old time, <laughs> but just for my personal taste, I probably would be wearing this for the winter or the fall season, but it's just such a lovely, lovely shade and another one that I'm very glad that I ended up getting. So that is Till Forever. And then last but not least is another one from their holographic collection. It's the Enchanted Collection, and this is called Dragonfly. This is another one that I'm very happy that I ended up getting, again, with that gorgeous holographic formula. Very, very impressed with that. I did end up doing three coats of this one as well, although this one was definitely one that falls into the two to three coater. Um, so I think on some nails, you could get away with just two coats. Others that have longer nails might need that third, but it's an absolutely gorgeous color. It is kind of a dusty pinky red, really, really gorgeous. And again, that linear flare is just beautiful. So I will be curious to see how it compares to other colors in my collection, but I think this is fairly unique. So it's a really gorgeous shade and another that I'm very happy that I ended up getting. So that again was Dragonfly. So there you have it. That was our little showcase of the Ella and Miller brand. Let me know down below if you have any of their colors in your collection, any favorites that I might have missed. There was a whole lot of other colors that I was eyeing, but I was trying to keep it down to a 
a reasonable price tag at the end of it even with their sale I didn't want to go too too overboard um, but I really am happy with the colors that I did end up picking although once I had them all laid out here as I said in the beginning I, I do feel like I stuck to one side of the color wheel <laughs> um, I would be curious to try a, a bit more of their blues greens um, maybe their actual deeper purples because I did stick with the dustier shades of them but really happy with their formulas. I will be curious to see how they end up wearing, although like I've said before, wear tests are not something that I really do because I change my nails a lot. Um, on the regular, it's usually between every two to three days. Sometimes it might reach four if I'm kind of busy. I think last month in February, I ended up changing my nails almost every single day. So <laughs> doing a wear test doesn't really work, but let me know down below if you've had a good experience with their wear. If for you, they stick on your nails nicely. Also, let me know if you've tried any of their other formulas like their holographic or their shimmers. And if you have any that I should check out next time they're having a sale. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that little subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos and I will see you in that next one.